Hello and welcome back to Legends of the Dead. We have a couple of questions from the comments to start off today. Second question I'm going to roll in to uh, what we're going to do in the actual episode. So, question number one. Why can only our family become shield maidens? Well, the answer for this is unsatisfying and I'm not happy with it. The answer is... Under the Make Shield Maiden thing, it says only close family members can be offered to become Shield Maiden. However, I have an objection to this. My objection is that isn't what it says in the culture. What it says is, characters of this culture may become Shield Maidens if their faith's gender doctrines are biased against them. It says nothing about it having to be done by a close family member. But, it does. It's just the way it is. Why is it this way? My only thought is it has to be to limit the amount of event spam that's in the game. But this seems like such a minute thing that comes up so rarely that I don't see how it could cause that much event spam. But anyway, that's my only guess. Or it was inherited from something else and then put into the new culture system, which actually seems kind of possible as well, right? Like maybe it was just a thing that Norse cultures could do. And then when the new culture system came in, they put it in like this, but they didn't actually change how it worked from how it originally worked on Norse cultures. Those are my only guesses, so if anybody has any other guesses, please let me know. Now, can the AI create shield maidens? Uh, yes. Yes, they can. We can prove this uh, with this person. This person is a different dynasty of ours. She is not related to us in any way, and she is a shield maiden. So the AI can create them, however there are only 12 in the world. Why are there only 12? Well, there's actually quite specific uh, restrictions on Shield Maidens. One, you have to be the child of a ruler, which greatly limits the number of people who could become a Shield Maiden. You have to be a culture, which has Shield Maidens, which again, greatly limits the number of people. Then, on top of that, not only do you have to be a child of the right culture, and, or, well, I guess you have to be an adult, because you have to be above 16, but you get what I'm saying. Not only do you have to be a child of a ruler, and you have to be the right culture, I believe you also have to have 16 prowess, which is quite difficult to get to unless you're breeding a family of giants who also happen to be aspiring blade masters, giving you a plus 9 to your base prowess. So, yeah, there are a lot of restrictions on it, but... Yeah, it's kind of weird that because there's all these restrictions on it, it also then limits you on who you can invite into being a shield maiden. It seems like you could just invite anyone. But maybe they also only want it to be children of rulers because maybe they want it to be rarer. I don't know. Anyway, there's all sorts of reasons it could be, but there you go. I also just realized that you could, in theory, make shield maidens kind of weird because maiden kind of implies which gender it's going to be. But... It doesn't actually say that it has to be, so you could it, it has to be a woman. So what you could do is you could switch it the other way. So you have Marshall uh, to be women only, and then you'd have the men be shield maidens, which is kind of a weird term. But anyway, yeah, okay, there you go. You can do that. Right. Question number two. What is development, and why would you want a better capital? What what is a better capital? What does it do for you? Well. Development does a couple of different things. Development, if we have a look at us, uh, us here, as tribal, doesn't really do that much. Uh, from a base level, what development gives us is it gives a supply l limit on the, pro on the province. That's it. That's really all it does. It's not that exciting. If we have a look at someone who's feudal, however, like Aquitaine over here, what it does is it gives um, levies and taxes as a percent, and I believe it's after the calculation has been done, right? So it calculates what your total tax is going to be this way, then it adds 5%. I could be wrong, but I think that's that's the way it works, so it is pretty good. It's a fairly solid increase to uh, the amount of money you're making or the amount of troops that you have, especially if you have it across a lot of provinces, and especially if you have a higher number, like, say, the papacy. The papacy gets you 22.5% levies and 22% taxes with 45 development. That's pretty good. That's a very, very solid increase to the amount that they're making. Now, can I show you what really annoys me about development? The, the, I have another just thing that annoys me about development. 
why is this 16 and 16, right? So this is half. So uh, you get half the bonuses of your development number to levies and taxes, while this is 22.5 and 22. So on odd numbers, you get 0.5% levies. On even numbers, you get 1% tax. Why is that different? Why are taxes and levies separated? Why do you get a smoother curve with levies than you do with taxes? Is there any logical reason why this is? I don't know. I can't think of a reason really why you would want that to be unless you wanted to delay tax increases by 1%. It's such an odd decision to have made in the first place that it makes you wonder why it was done. I don't know. It's just another mystery. So, that's development. Now, I said I was going to roll this question into what we're going to be doing today. Well, if I roll it in a little bit, there is another thing that development does. Development goes in here and it increases the amount that you gain if you're going to gain a tech up. So tech works in a weird way. What you get is you get this separated into two parts. You get the amount of tech that you can get per month, which is a base amount plus the average development of all of your counties made into a number, right? Like, obviously, 0.1 is not the average of all of our development. At least I assume it isn't. I'll double check over here. But I think that's right. Uh, it might be the average, actually. We have a lot of zeros. But yeah, you see, this one's 0.24. So the average of French is not 0.24. Because all of theirs are, like, you know, in the 14s and 11s. So, yeah, you get a number made up of the average development. The average development increases that number plus a base amount. And that's how much you will gain if you happen to get an increase each month. You can get an increase by making it your fascination. Um, and what that does is that gives you an extra 36% currently for us. I think there's something that controls this, I can't remember. There's all sorts of perks that increase this and all sorts, but essentially that puts us up to 41% chance to get this number each month. So having higher development in your capital and in land that you hold, which will probably be your culture, is then going to increase the amount of tech that you get. It does also mean that in theory, doing the opposite of what we're doing has a benefit. So what we're doing is we're trying to expand our culture as much as possible into every province. We can get all the bonuses from our culture onto every province, so we can get as many people of our culture around so we can stop there being revolts due to different cultures. We're trying to do that. If you do the exact opposite, you keep a tiny little culture, what you can do is you can increase the average development really quickly because you have control of all the holdings, which then means you're going to get tech a lot quicker, which then means that you're going to get access to a whole bunch more things. And then when you get to a high enough tech level, you can then expand the culture and spread your really high tech around. That is an option. It's not the option we're going with in this playthrough, but yeah, it's something that you can do. Um, so that is what development does. Uh, development increases this number. So there is a reason to have it right now. Now, drawing it into what we're going to be doing today, why would you want a better capital? Well, you'd want a better capital because it has more buildings on it. And buildings give you bonuses. And all of these bonuses stack. And if you then have vassals here, they're going to be paying you taxes, which then gives you even more stuff. If you control multiple in the same holding, then these bonuses all are all stacking on top of each other, and then all the benefits are coming to you. And if it happens to be your capital, you also get additional bonuses for it being your realm capital, and that applies to tax and levies. And then any bonuses that you happen to get, uh, like Ferengi and capital we have right now, like... Uh, I was trying to find any other ones, but yeah, Varengian Capital is a big one here. Um, if you have a bonus like that, that will then apply to all of your holdings, which then means that you're going to be getting even more benefits and things are just going to be great for you. So, yeah, that's why you want to have a good capital, because you're going to have more building slots, you're going to have more holding slots, and you're going to have bonuses that stack on top of each other, and it's going to be great. Now... Rolling it into what we're going to be doing today, we're kind of reaching the limit of what our capital can do. Because we've got Tribal Hold to max, and we got these to max. And once this one's finished, this is also maxed out. 
This means that effectively, um, there is nothing else that we could possibly improve in our capital. That's a problem, because once we can't improve anything, other people are going to start getting bonuses, like feudal people are going to get bonuses that exceed us. So we're not happy with that. So we would love to potentially switch to feudal. However, to switch to feudal, we need to do a couple of different things. We actually have all the requirements to switch to feudal, by the way, pretty much. If we go and have a look at adopt feudal ways, we have an organized faith, we have a level of fame, we have the development, and we have all the innovations. Uh, all we need to do is get absolute tribal authority, which is literally one click of the button and costs 940 uh, prestige. But that's not what we need to do. What we need to do is, one, upgrade every one of our holdings to as much as we can because we want to spend prestige to upgrade buildings instead of spending money, and we can do that while we're tribal. But we also want to gain enough money that we can then um, buy all of this sort of stuff. So we want to be able to buy more castles, we want to be able to buy more cities, we want to be able to buy temples, right? And each of these is going to cost a fair amount of money, so we need to have a lot of money, um, and we need to have 900 prestige. That's basically my current situation, and we have to also upgrade all of our buildings. So, that's going to be our kind of our goal today. Upgrading buildings, getting ourselves ready to adopt feudal ways, and then maybe by the end of the episode we'll click the button. Uh, another thing that I want to do, though, before we convert to feudal, is I noticed we can't actually construct cities currently in Norse provinces. Because to construct cities, you need to have city planning. You also cannot construct temples, because to construct temples, you also need city planning, which we currently don't have. Now, we are working in our culture on Banis. And Banis gives us accolades available and levy reinforcements and all sorts of cool stuff. I think city planning is a lot more important. I think that's going to be great for us. Currently, it's going to take us 300 years. That's a little bit too long to wait. Let's click this. It's not going to take us 36 years. Now, that is a, still a fair amount of time, but, you know, that's the amount of time that we could maybe work with. Now, is it going to be on this character? I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be around for 30 years. But, it's definitely something that we want to be at least close to getting before we turn into feudal, because then we want to be able to use our money to buy all of these different buildings, which will then greatly increase our power. So, uh, money. Where are we going to get our money? Also, I just realized Bohemia is absolutely massive. Look at this. They're all over the place. Did you eat someone else somewhere? They must have ate... Yeah, they must have ate someone else over here. Yeah, in fact, all of this has fallen apart. They probably ate some of that in the in the meantime. Uh, yeah, so they are... Well, they're very long, I guess. They're not actually maybe... They're maybe as large as Car Carpathia, but they're just longer. Anyway... Also, Grand Principality? Does that mean that you're... No, no, you're just feudal. That's fine. Never mind. I thought that they might have been uh, this one, which is whatever yours is. That's Most Serene Republic, I see. Grand Principality, Most Serene Republic. Kind of same thing. Uh, where has money? Yeah, I'm getting distracted. Where has money? The Byzantines have 300 gold on their capital. Alright. We should um, help them with that. We should make sure that that 300 gold is well taken care of. Cool. Let's go and do that. We'll raise all of our troops up. A courtier between friends. You would like me to take this dude? Nope. See ya. Right. Uh, wait, how many men do the Byzantines have right now? 6,000. Perfect. They still have less than us. Right. Let's go sit on their capital and earn uh, 300 gold. Inspired person can be sponsored. You're legendary and you want to make me an urn. Usually I would tell you to um, earn your keep elsewhere, but uh, I will accept that because um, we don't. We basically have nothing. My nephew was captured. My nephew currently owns Zaporizhia. Uh, you were captured during the siege of Karakurman. You're about to lose a war, nephew, aren't you? Uh, or are you secondary in a war? No, you're primary in all these wars. You're about to lose this war. Hmm. All right, well. Good job, nephew. You've had the land for all of two seconds, and uh, you're going to lose it. Well, that's fine, I guess. It's not our problem. 
Right. Ooh, tons of money potentially for us there. Your realm will lose land if this person dies. Oh no, it will go to Zaporizhia. Oh well, whatever. Offer concubine. This guy is truly awful. You know his redeeming feature? His redeeming feature is that we are above the age of 50 and we're not going to have any children. So, wait, no, he hates me. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I was going to take him and then I realized that uh, he hates me. I'm not going to get somebody like that who hates me. I'll, I'll take a concubine just to reduce the, the negative penalty, but I won't take somebody who actually is going to try and kill us. This guy's an organizer. An organizer, flexible leader, unyielding um, defender. He's fantastic. His only problem is that he's going to die whether whatever we do here. So I'll just convert him and let him go. If he was younger, we would have recruited him. You can also be converted. That's fine. Let's make our way over here. Siege this. Inspiration, a friendly word. Oh, there you are, Drifa. I've just spoken to Valdonna. I heard she's making an urn for you. I couldn't resist to visit her workshop. We talked about... Uh, or I talked to her about how to meet your expectations. I think you will like the result. Slightly higher quality. Wonderful. And here? A lovely doll? This doll event appears too much. I'm going to give that to Drifa. We now have another friend. Okay. In here, prisoner. You're a mayor, we can get 22 for you. I don't... Oh, I could convert you. You're a mayor. I will convert you to my religion and culture. I'm then going to attack this army out of nowhere. They're never going to see it coming. However, uh, I'm going to see the amount of money that we just made. 53 gold. Wonderful. And then we can uh, raid that as well. Uh, you've converted the faith in the Isle of Wight. Wonderful. Have we converted everywhere? Uh, No, we have some new land over here. Ah, yes, uh, the land of Ryzan over here that I definitely remember us getting. Uh, I definitely don't think that my vassals expanded even further without me realizing it. That would be crazy. Does this sell a lot of money? Oh, this has loads of money. Oh, well, we'll go take, we'll take all of that. Thank you. Back over this way. Continue taking our money. Nice. Your neighbor, Queen Gunhilder of Danelaw as one in, in a holy war for the um, petty kingdom of Upland. She won against my vassal. Hmm. Okay. Oh, hello there. I'm going to beat you up as well. You'd like us to be in an alliance. Sure, I mean, like, you're four levels down, but you can be in, a li in an alliance with me if that'll make you feel better. I need a guardian for my granddaughter, Drifa. You want to do an intrigue education? No, no, no. You want to do a martial education. That's what you want to be doing. Are we smart? No. Okay. Are you smart? No. You're smart. You you can educate them. Actually, do we have a do we have a genius? That's probably an easier way to do it. Yes. Uh, you can educate them. Wonderful. That'll work for me. Right. Apparently our steward fell ill. Do we actually have a disease? Uh, let me just double check. Uh, well, we don't have the disease map mode button actually, so no, we don't have a disease in our realm. Okay. Randomly attack another army. Defeated them. Earned 134 gold. Wonderful. Svonhilder has been born. Wonderful. Court physician has become better. I'm not going to say the word again. I bump into a very grave looking uh, Valdona, my potter, hoping that she doesn't bring ill news of the splendid urn she should soon have ready for me. Well, there you are, my liege. I've hit a wall of my work. Nothing major. My ideas have gone to ground as the pressure mounts. I just need some inspiration. Mighty High Queen, might you have some prior examples I could examine? Uh, no, but you know what we could do? We could run. We lost progress. Well, you know, I should have seen that coming. Uh, I will take Bounteous Plunder. We'll take another 30 in here. We now have 500 gold with us. Uh, let's head over here. We've lost our court tutor. Oh. We need a new martial lifestyle perk. Uh, let's take Organized March. It'll make us move quicker. Right. Court tutor. 
That's going to be uh, Rostislava because she is younger. And why is being younger better? Well, because she'll be around longer and we don't have to reassign her. That's pretty much the whole reason. And it means if the previous, it means that we're not having to replace it often. It means we always have a court tutor. It means that in theory, if they're equal level now, they can in theory get boosts later to be even better. Although they're excellent, so like what boosts are we expecting? But yeah, it's just generally good practice if we have two equal ones, that one is significantly younger to use the significantly younger one. It is a little bit ageist, but uh, you know what? It works for us. Right, head up here. Cool, head to the next one. Your neighbor has lost against um, this person. Uh, so that is Oghuz uh, for the county of Saracen. Oh, so that's, that's the one that we saw them losing, actually. Yeah, so they've expanded even further over here. Okay, cool. Right, continue this. A doll? Wow, what a unique event. I'm going to give that to you. I can beat you up without even having to take attrition because you happen to be standing next to a major river. That's wonderful. Who am I going to dedicate this to? I'm going to dedicate this to High King Batten. I'm sure you'll love it. I'm also overwhelmed by stress. And my nephew is now speaking Turkish. Okay. Sure. Uh, my friend is dead. That's not great. Uh, oh no, no, no. Uh, should have done this first before I unpaused. I can't work of stress because I'm in an army. Okay, let me just do some completely normal things. There we go. Work of stress. Right, then we can say another lap. So we get st sweaty stench, so lower general opinion. We're then going to put ourselves in charge. I'm then going to take this. This will not gain us enough stress to get another stress level because we just lowered our stress. Yeah, that's definitely how that should work. Oh yeah, I've been told that this uh, demand local submission thing, by the way, uh, it might actually um, just make people give up when you declare this. Like, they can say give up or they can join you. So, it might be worth doing for some land actually near us. Queen Skuld has created a cadet branch, the Majovi branch. Oh, he promoted culture. Well done. Um, right. You know, actually, where it'd be good to get some culture? The Isle of Wight. Why? One, because it's our land. And two, because uh, by doing this, uh, it will get us an 11 development place uh, of our culture, which will help us with the average culture. Or the average uh, development uh, in our culture. Wonderful. A lonely doll? Wow. You can have that. Um, Ulf Gear comes of age. He's a champion and our friend. He's only got 14 prowess? Ugh. He's not great, is he? Okay, we'll come back to him in a little bit. Right, head up here. He can marry. Yeah, we'll worry about him when we get home. Right. Inspiration request for funds. Have some money. Next one. Okay. Inspiration realized you made me an urn. 0 0.05 prestige and 2 court grandeur. Um, it's almost nothing. That's what we, were, we, we have just uh, purchased. There is our almost nothing. It's not quite nothing because it does give us 2 court grandeur. Which is kind of useful, but, like, it's pretty much nothing. Yeah, they pretty much gave us nothing there. Uh, your neighbor won uh, against your other neighbor in the third Volga Bulgarian conquest of the High Chiefdom of Kazan. Right. Let's make our way up here. We could ask our nephew to just uh, submit to us. That's something that we could do. The scandal. Oh, no. Don't need to worry about that. That's not, wait, that's not my land. No, no, you have to go back. <laughs> I just realized that's Ruthenia. It may look like our land, but it's not. Ah, 700 gold. Wonderful. Um, right. Well, you have almost no troops. You're my nephew. 
You know what? I'm just going to ask him to uh, submit to me. Demand local submission. You. My armies are raised? They are. You're right. You. Demand fealty. He becomes our vassal if we win. I will declare my war. I was told that he had a chance to surrender. This does not appear to be the case. However, we will take his land anyway. I was willing to uh, roll the dice there. I've just decided that, you know what? Uh, if he's not going to keep the land, we worked really hard for it. Wait, we had land down here? Wait, 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 wait. We had land down here? I could have raised my troops here. But also, it's very useful land to have. There we go. Let's raise our troops. There we go. Oh yeah, my son can marry. Oh, I mean, he is my champion and my friend. I guess we could keep him around. It's not very good. Is there anything we could do to make him better? Um, marry him to somebody with incredible stats? That was my thought. Maybe we could marry him to a genius and roll the dice and hope that we get something out of this. There are no geniuses? Okay. Well, in that case, uh, I will marry you to Rose. I think that would be fine. Somebody with really high... Um, so, you know what? Let's go for Marshall instead. Let's get someone with high Marshall. Let's go with Agrafena here. I was going to go with someone with high stewardship, but we don't want him to be our heir. So, we don't care about that. Yeah, let, let's go with that. Wait, do you even have an inheritable trait? No. Wait, clear that out. Inheritable trait. Then we're going to look for High Marshal. Okay, there there is nobody. Uh, maybe we'll roll the dice with this person? Sure. Let's do that. Right. That seems fine. Continue raising our troops. Right. Diametrically opposed. My good companion, Ulfgear, has been off with me the last few days, each night avoiding my invitation to dine. Griffa, I'm sorry to tell you this as your friend. Your constant business and demands for results. It puts you in ba bad stead. Surely you would. Uh, you must see it. Does the High Queen no good to behave this way? I can. There's a 15% chance he's no longer my friend, but I can lose a ton of stress. Alright, that seems like a fair trade-off for me. Okay, we're good to go. Uh, let's go... Can I just walk to your capital? I mean, it is next to the water. Yup. Alright. Uh, arrange marriage between these two? That seems great to me. And um, people were saying that there is no... Like, that we could marry off our people to people who are geniuses instead of intelligent, and we would still have the chance of generating geniuses. There is a reason to not do this, right? There is a reason to marry intelligent to intelligent with the hope of getting genius rather than marrying genius to intelligent with the hope of getting genius. The reason why you would do it intelligent to intelligent is that that increases, in theory, the number of geniuses in your culture's pool uh, because that genius can then marry somebody else who might not have an education tree. And having two and the intelligent person could then marry in the other circumstance, could marry somebody else who doesn't have one of these uh, intelligence traits. Um, if the intelligent person marries them, the only chance of getting children out of that is intelligent. If the intelligent people marry each other and the genius marries them, then both marriages have a chance of, of getting geniuses, which then increases the number of geniuses in the pool. Now, in theory, if we think that the person is likely going to be our heir someday, we should definitely do genius to intelligent, because that will then mean that uh, their children will be the ones that are powered up and geniuses, which has its own benefits. But there is a reason if you're just trying to generally increase the genius pool for your culture to do it this way. Um, you can argue whether or not that's, worth, that's a worthwhile goal, but there is a reason to do it. Uh, Bergeslagen just lost against Sweden. Okay. You've converted the faith in Ryzan. Okay. We have an event. No, we don't. Okay, that was my mistake. 
Uh, you know what that probably is each time we have an event? That's probably we have an event, but we're leading an army, so the event gets uh, discarded. I suspect that's what's happening here. Also, did you just lose against a peasant faction? I think you did. Anyway. Oh, no, they probably de-sieged it with that army. That's fine. We'll take the really quick siege of the capital because... Um, wow, that was a very quick war. I was going to say we'll take the quick siege of the capital because it was just sieged, but uh, yes, we did it. Okay. Well, that land's mine. Uh, that seems pretty good. We also stole a statue. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I actually greatly appreciate stealing your statue. We now have a statue that gives us almost nothing. But all of these almost nothing court grandeur bonuses are actually adding up to get our baseline to be quite high. Which is what we want. This guy is my nephew, Vassal. He actually quite likes us. This seems pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who are you at war with? I'm in a holy war. With the with uh, these guys? Wait. You declared a holy war? Not the Byzantines. These guys? Alright, well, um... I guess I'm going to go win a holy war. Um, five months in this siege. There's a scandal. My vassal Jarl Bjorg has been showing the signs of pregnancy for some time now. Oh, scandalous. All right, we're going to split the army in half. We're going to head over here. I'm going to leave that one there. Do we have a siege leader? I thought we had one. I thought we recruited some dude. We did. Wonderful. So he'll do the siege there. We'll head over this way and siege this one. When this siege finishes, we'll head over to that siege. Um, okay. Olafur, my guest, is trying to uh, scheme against Guthrun, my courtier. Throw him in jail. Right. Uh, Olafur, you are going to be uh, executed. Conrad, you are going to be publicly executed. Because I needed the, um, what's it called? The uh, control in the Isle of Wight. There we go. So we now have more control there. Wonderful. You are actually kind of okay. You know what? You want to join my, my team? You are not good enough. Worth any money? Nope. Well, executed it is then. You are good enough to join my team. You want to convert and be recruited? Yeah, okay. Wonderful. I like how it was like, he hates us because we recruited him. He loves us because he converted. Ooh, wonderful. Uh, Wanderlust. That's the one we wanted. We wanted Wanderlust. Why do we want Wanderlust? Because now we can send our members of our dynasty, who we don't think are good enough, to the Varangian Guard, rather than having them stick around, and then they can gain extra traits in the Varangian Guard. In theory, actually, we could just send every member of our dynasty to the Varangian Guard, and then if they come back, then they can potentially be rulers. Uh, do we have any members of our dynasty currently that we need to send? I guess we could send... Um, where are we? Oster? Uh, what was Age? There we go. We could send you, but you'll probably say no because you're uh, married. No, because I'm at war. Oh, okay. That's fine. Um, Uthal has become my rival. You don't have to be my rival. We could just like, be chill with each other. Well, guess not. Um, out of wedlock? King Guthrifer. I love like just the hands-on-head panic that we're getting on his model there. Uh, has had a child with Chief De or is having a child with Chief De Sith. Shocking. Oh well. My niece Thora is having a child with Thagen. Okay. <laughs> None of this is important at all. These are not bits of information we need to know. Somebody, uh, I guess it's this child, needs to do their uh, rite of passage. Okay. Well, you're a talky child. I don't know what we do with a talky child. How about you st You gain a uh, commander trait based on the destination's terrain? 
Um, I don't know. How about you do a scarification ritual? Here, Drifa of the Oster shall be marked and hewn, riven by pain. We look. When we look on her in days to come, we shall see conviction. We shall see she is a woman. To wear the proof is to know pride. So, chance she gains martial lifestyle experience or brave. Uh, it could also leave her scarred or wounded. Maybe this can just be symbolic. She gets intrigue stuff. Or, she is not ready yet. Oh, I, this one actually gives a guaranteed proven tribal adult as well. To, uh, to wear the proof is to know pride. She is scarred, but... She is a proven adult, and sh I guess that's something. Okay, head over here. Join this. Uh, we'll then siege. I think it's maybe quicker for us to siege here. Because, oh, also this guy needs to go back on to doing that. Uh, because we have in here, engineered for destruction, which gives a siege weapon effectiveness. And I think we have to lead the army for that to be effective. Well, what does Siege, um, I guess we can actually see, what does the Siege trait uh, do? Siege trait gives you 30% less Siege phase time. Okay, I don't know how those translate to each other. I don't know which one is necessarily better. That person speaking Norse, by the way, was the event I ignored. All right, you, th you suggest we try new things that worked the last two try times. This time, um, I've been rubbing my skin with ashes for a fortnight, and it also worked. Wonderful. Princess Freya has been showing signs of pregnancy, um, and everyone thought that her concubine was the father of the child. Now it's become clear that her real father is none other than Carrie. Oh. Shocking. Okay. Continuing my siege. And... It's finished. That's a 100% war score. Just through those. Which actually means that this person I can ransom back for 37 uh, gold and still have a 100% war score. Wonderful. I'm going to enforce my demands. It gets us a little bit of piety, a little prest prestige, and a little bit of money. Wonderful. And now we can disband. The legitimacy would have gone up had it been able to. Uh, we can do a runestone, but it's going to be conquest, which increases control, which we don't need. And we can hold court. We can also r ransom Duchess Theodosia. Let's do that. She's the only person in my prison. Okay. Thank you very much for the money. Right, let's hold court. A traitor uncovered. One of my guards approaches with my champion, Hildebert, in chains trailing behind him. I caught Hildebert here in the process of sending sensitive information to foreign spies in Volga, Bulgaria. What shall we do with him? Are you telling me that the former member of a holy order um, might be plotting against us? Um, that is shocking. I am going to forgive you. Which gives us a loyalty hook, which I believe means that he can't act against you. I think we had an issue in a mod where they had... Um, like a magical way for the AI to apply that to you, and then there was basically nothing you could do against that AI character. So I think it's the sim similar situation here. So, yeah, okay. Uh, my lady, I come with grave news, but with a solution to fix this problem. It's becoming increasingly clear that the Finns and Norse are becoming more, perhaps even too similar. It's paramount that we show them that it's us, Norse, who are the forefront of innovation. It's paramount that we do not get along. Well, you know what? I disagree. Although, actually, your opinion does matter to me. I slightly agree, but only enough to satisfy you in the short term. My son, Ulfgear, comes to me asking me to annul his betrothal to Smechna, the daughter of Count Burslav of Poznan. She's a bad match. I will annul your betrothal. You are free of her. The reason you are free of her, though, is not the reason you think. Because I'm going to send you to the Varengian Guard, and you're going to become better and then come back. Be gone. Glory and fame awaits. I also love the concept that we have the Varengian Guard, so we're sending them to the Byzantines. And then we're like, yeah, then we're going to go raid you. Then you can guard against us. Um, Probably not what they had in mind. Um, we could promote a legend, can we? Is there a legend 
can we promote let how can I promote leg promote legends? Are there any to promote? It says I can promote a legend. Um This would be creating it. I don't think there's a legend for me to promote, Kate. Maybe I could promote this one? Oh, I can't promote this one, but I could own this one, I see. If I was a member of the dynasty. I can promote this one. Oh. What does promoting it get you? One marshal. I think I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah, I don't think we need to do that. Right. On pause. My alliance has ended as they are no longer married or betrothed. Good. New marshal perk. I'm gonna choose. I don't know. Sappers is really good, so I guess we want to go down this path. I was going to say um, that I might be done with this, but Sappers is actually really good. So it's probably worth going down to at least Sappers, if not Strategist. Yeah, and then pivoting to something else. Okay, uh, we could go raid some more. I'm just going to wait for these to finish and then we'll do it. Right. Uh, unpopular favorite. I'm still smiling at a joke my Chancellor Fyodora made this, this morning's council session when Queen Ingfrid catches my arm. Liege, I've been meaning to talk to you. I know you feel much affection for him, but really, a place in the council? To be blunt, if these slights are not addressed, only Uko knows what will befall, befall Gartheriki. Um, I can have disgruntled vassals. Methinks you want his job. Okay. Or very well, I'll dismiss him. I'm gonna pick my own vast, uh, my own uh, council. Thank you very much. That being said, is there somebody better? Yeah, I can put Bijarma Land in charge, and then who could I put in as my marshal? Many people. Okay, I'm sorry, you are actually fired. Uh, I just didn't want to tell her that I was firing you, and then we can put this guy in, and both positions have now been improved, and we have powerful vassals. Yeah, that seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. Right, um, these are about to finish. They're almost there. Our neighbors won a war in a subjugation war. We could, in theory, ask more people to just swear fealty to us if we wanted to, like these guys up here. My court physician is dead! No, who's going to tell us to rub ash into ourselves in order to um, avoid um, becoming m more ill with cancer? Okay, we can get a good court physician here. Let's do a courtier check and then see where we're at. Also, all of these are about to finish, so we'll wait for them. Wonderful. So, that's a bunch of bonuses we just got there. Oh, and converted faith. Wonderful. I got more places for you to convert. Why don't you convert this one? Great. Uh, next up. Oh, also, are you still... Yeah, you're still Okonisko, which is what we want you to be. Right. Um, build. So this is fully upgraded. Vladimir, fully upgraded. Suistal, we can upgrade a little bit. We'll get the upgrade of the sparring grounds. This one's fully upgraded. This one's fully upgraded. We cannot upgrade this one. Right. Okay, well, I mean, there's not really a lot to upgrade, is there? Uh, really, what we're missing is the... Um, yeah, is the city planning thing. If we had city planning, we would 100% just convert from tribal now. But we don't have it, so yeah, we, we are where we are. Do I want to integrate these guys, or do I want to just wait for my vassals to do it? I could try integrating them. I mean, you're allied to White Rust, so that, that's going to make it difficult to get them any other way. Uh, Oh, apparently, uh, yeah, I can demand fealty. Let's see if this works. I demand fealty. No, so I don't think this gives them a chance to surrender. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is a chance, and I'm, I, I don't know what that is, but anyway. Whatever. I'm going to raise my troops, and I'm just going to take their land. I think this is just a subjugation war that we got here. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what the info is on that. Um, that increased our marshal, I think. Yeah, so our marshal is now 40, because that is tied to our religion... Uh, on this one, Marshal per level of devotion. Wonderful. Right, let's head in here. Uh, our neighbor has won 
in the Alborg of Frisia, in the Frisian claim for something. And something is under siege. Okay. That's fine. Head over here. And I guess we'll just siege this. My brother-in-law. Your proud stride is the rock I cling to in stormy seas. No, I don't read poetry. I, I made this a rule. Um, do, do you want to win my heart? Sure, you can win my heart. Why, wait a second. He shouldn't win my heart. Nope, he has lover's pox. Definitely he should not win my heart. Your neighbor, King Ulf, has lost against your vassal in the holy war for the Duchy of Upland. At last, after about 20 holy wars, the Duchy of Upland is now... Wait, back at... Did we not have Upland at one point? We, no, we, we went, we bypassed it. We were going to get Upland at one point. That was it. But yes, now we have finally got it. Alright. Good job, vassals. How quick is this? Three months. Alright. King Ulf's pox spreads. Your neighbor is lost in another war. Okay, but not against our vassal. Uh, daughter of my... Uh, my daughter, Bodil, has given birth to a son, who is handsome. Okay. Right. Uh, vassal is taken prisoner. Well, that probably means that vassal is not winning their war, huh? Command conversion. Can I convert you? Probably not. You're landed. Yeah, I'll get your money. That's fine. Okay. Here, nothing we need to worry about. Negotiate alliance. Yeah, you're vaguely in my realm. I'll take the alliance. Okay, that's fine. And defeated their army. That's a 100% war score because we just captured their leader. And that was also worth an extra 76 gold. Wonderful. Enforce demands. Disband. This land with a pile of money. It's only 52% chance they convert. Why is it so low? Fervor. Alright, well, why don't you just convert? I've decided to convert. Good choice. Good choice. That meant that your land did not get revoked, which uh, is really quite good for you. Wonderful. So, we've expanded quite a lot there. I think that is pretty good there. We have a pile of money, which is also pretty good. And we're about to finish this. The main thing that we're missing is the court planning. We are still quite significant, or sorry, city planning. We're still quite significantly off. We're 33 years off that, which is a problem. Yeah. I guess we're just gonna continue making money. Uh, let's, let's get our court physician while we're here. I completely forgot to do that. Do search first. Theodora's ultimatum. Griffa, High Queen, I cannot stand it any longer. You exclude me. Get, give in to your duty when you know I was a perfectly good counselor. If this is how I'm to be treated, I will have to look for new prospects. I hear King Aethwald of England knows how to reward loyal subjects. I mean, here, here's the long and short of it, mate. You and your wife, you know, like, you're not doing anything in my court. You're just here. Um, come on, you know it's a lot more complex than that. He left, but the other one actually stayed. Uh, we best we can get is good here. They failed to impress me. Let's go back here a second. Do you want to come back to my court? No, he quite likes me, but he doesn't want to come back. Okay, well maybe he'll just come back eventually. Uh, my neighbor lost against somebody in a holy war. Wait a second, that's one of my vassals. Oh no, my vassals are expanding even further. Okay, well, there you have it. Um, I just want to point out, by the way, that I left this side of the world alone, right? I left this alone. I didn't do anything to it. Well, I mean, I raided it slightly, I suppose. I only vaguely interfered in this side of the world. Why is it so fallen apart? What happened? What went wrong? I mean, I guess what happened over here kind of spilled over, but yeah, like there's no there's no major power in here. It's all falling apart. Denmark is becoming the major power in uh, Central Europe. 
it's it's kind of crazy. I guess the Byzantines also fell apart. Maybe the Carpathian Empire kind of destroyed. Yeah, you know what? I think it's the Carpathian Empire when it existed. I think it caused a lot of damage to the stability down here. Um, also, the papacy has expanded greatly. It's all the way down here now. Yeah. So the papacy's taken over Italy. Carpathian Empire, I guess, killed off um, this bit of land that usually exists in here. France and Aquitaine took the rest, and then, yeah, it all just fractured into tiny little states all over the place. And Frisia, which kind of exists. Yeah, interesting. Uh, anyway, courtiers. Do we have anybody unmarried? Uh, unmarried. We have a few. Yeah. Do we have anybody we want to marry? I mean, you're sterile, so I'm going to say that probably the chances of getting children off of you are as... Slim, I would imagine. Um, well, we don't care if they're fertile, I guess. Mm, oh, yeah, we don't care about inheritable traits. Uh, is there anyone with a court physician? Physician? Yeah, there are a few. What's your, phys your novice physician? Is, there a is it renowned physician? Is that the one I'm actually looking for? Renowned. It's the same trait. It's the same trait, but a different level. Okay, so you look for that trait, and then you can find it. Novice, 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 novice. Hmm. Yeah, so it's the same trait. Everyone's novice physicians. You're a wise woman. Novice physician. I guess you're a wise woman and novice physician, but you're also about to die. Let's go with Britta here. Actually, she's insane. Let's go with the slightly less insane person here. Yeah, let's get that marriage going. Chance of children is only low. Okay. Well, there is a chance. Halstein? Uh, here, we kind of care. Um, There we go. It's Britta again. Okay. Marry this uh, giant. Although, I mean, they're also a lunatic. I want to avoid the number, of, uh, like, increasing the number of lunatics in my court. Let's get rid of this. Let's go back to inheritable traits. Uh, what have we got here? Anyone with a good trait? Not really. How about her? She seems fine. Uh, anyone with good prowess? No, it doesn't matter because they, they can't be shield made and yeah. Or right, this person. They're at least quick. Let's get someone quick in our court. Uh you? We got anybody who would marry you? Uh we've got many who would marry him. Do we have many who are good? Probably not. Can I set I probably want to set a maximum age, right? Say maximum age thirty five. There we go. Mm. Nobody's inspiring. How about you? Yeah, I guess we'll go for you. That's fine. Gildebert can't marry. You. Is this the same list? It's the exact same list. I guess we will go with this person. Having rejected them. You're a guest, so you can either leave or stay. I can't recruit you, so actually you're just going to stay. And then we have you. Right, so we're going to change this a little bit. I'm going to go back to Physician. Okay, there are only two. That makes our life much easier for searching. Okay, uh, let's change this to All. Let's take away the Age filter. Let's see who has the highest. Yeah, you're still a novice. It's still a novice. Yeah, might as well go with the 35-year-old here then. Right, let's do that. Wonderful. Our counselor died of old age. Is he actually my counselor or is he my ex counselor? He's my ex counselor. That's fine. Right. Who is the best court physician? It's a toss up between my brother in law who's trying to seduce us or this person. I choose this person. A competent craven. All right. Fantastic. And with that, I think that is a good point to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.